Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Gardener. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. So a lot of you guys were asking a video on leaf propagation. That is a complete video on leaf propagation. Now guys, the video is going to be a very long video. Uh, like uh, the entire process is going to take a very very long time. So of course I cannot. Uh, put everything in one video otherwise uh, it'll take another year to release the video so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this video in parts and once again i'm going to put it in the playlist so whenever there is a new progress i will add the video in the playlist because even i'm not sure uh, when the things will progress it all depends upon the succulent it all depends upon um uh, how smoothly the propagation tends to go but uh, we will be uh, talking about in detail in every video and every step how it tends to work out so as and when there is a new progress i will be adding a video in this playlist so the first step that we need to understand is uh, you need to understand how your environment is uh, is your environment too hot or is your environment too cold or if you're growing your uh, leaf propagation or if you're doing the leaf propagation indoor there is no issue but if you're doing a leaf propagation outdoor then you have to ensure that your climate is pleasant it's cool it's not too hot it's not too uh, cold only then if you feel that your environment is very pleasant outdoors then you can do your leaf propagation outdoor now for me it's not much of an issue because my environment is very pleasant throughout the year so i tend to do my propagation throughout the year outside now over here i have a bunch of titubans that i'm planning to do a leaf propagation because uh, titubans is a uh, winter growing succulent so you have to ensure that the leaf propagation that you are getting into has to match according to the environment like let's say that you want to propagate at this winter season you can propagate a lot of succulents because a lot of succulents are in their growing season apart from echeverias but for me uh, dormancy is not very strict uh, so for me even if i tend to propagate uh, uh, echeverias they also tend to get propagated but at a much slower rate but in this video we are going to be working with a succulent that is a winter growing succulents because very soon it is going to be winters so the first thing uh, select a succulent that is in its growing period now over here i have to buns now the next important thing you need to understand is whether the succulent is hydrated or not now over here the grapto area titubans is very well hydrated but i'm not very convinced with this uh, succulent right now because the leaves are slightly thin which means that it is slightly underwatered now if i have to propagate this succulent i'll have to first water it make the leaves very plump and then take the leaves for propagation now that's going to take a lot of time so i already have another individual uh, Tito buns that is uh, very well hydrated. You can see the leaves are much more plump. Uh, the leaves are much lighter in color because they are more hydrated. This one is slightly dehydrated and it has stress colors. So this one is very well hydrated. The leaves are very plump, so I can uh, choose leaves from this. Now always ensure that whenever you are taking out the leaves, you have to be extremely gentle while taking out the leaves. Uh, go for the lower leaves because they are the mature leaves uh, they are much more thick uh, they have a high potential of giving you a pup so a successful pup so now let's very gently twist and turn and the leaf will just fall apart the same thing with this one just twist and turn and the leaf will fall apart now you can see the cut is very clean uh, there is uh, no fragments that is left on the stem it's a very clean cut uh the same thing with this one as well you can see it's a very clean cut so this is how your uh leaf has to be it has to be plump it should not be soggy it should not be mushy it should not be yellow otherwise those leaves have a very less chance that they are going to get propagated so we're going to take some couple of more leaves again just twist and turn and they will come off very easily so all of the leaves that i'm taking out are very uh fresh they do not have any burns they do not they are not yellow they are not brown as you can see all of them are very fresh with a very a clean cut so this is how it's supposed to be so i'll just take another few more and then we are good to go so i think i'm just going to propagate so you can see the mother plant is still very good uh, she does not look uh, shapeless because we still want to maintain a very beautiful healthy mother plant so the mother plant is taken care now remember we have cut taken off a lot of leaves from the mother plant you can see those cuts so ensure that this mother plant does not come in contact with any moisture or any water do not water the pot even though the 
cuts are very high on the stem we still do not want to take any chance so now we have all of our leaves over here as you can see uh, none of them are yellow none of them are mushy all of them are very fresh now again it's not necessary that all of these uh, seven leaves are going to get propagated successfully probably one two or maybe three might not be successful but that again completely depends upon the leaf and the environment we can't do much about it that's why whenever you are doing a leaf propagation try to take at least more than five leaves so that if nothing works out at least there's going to be one successful propagation and that's more than enough but over here we have taken seven so let's see what we are going to do next so now these leaves are very fresh all of these ends are very fresh they shouldn't come in contact with any water or any moisture not even like half a percent of moisture should come in contact with them so you have to ensure that you either keep it on a dry surface or somewhere where there is a good amount of air circulation where there is a good amount of indirect bright light and it is dry that is the most important part it shouldn't come in contact with any water so now i'm going to keep it aside now if you want you can just leave them on a dry table like this there is a good amount of air circulation you can just leave them over here for at least two or three days because that is ideally uh, the time frame it takes for a succulent to callus for the succulent leaves to callus so two to three days is good enough so you can either leave it on a dry surface like this or you can put them on dry soil so i'm going to show you how i tend to make the soil mix so now over here i have some regular garden soil uh, it's little gritty which is absolutely okay there is no need for you to filter it and now what i'm going to do is uh, if i'm have taking 50 percent of uh, garden soil then i'm going to take uh, 50% of uh, cocoa peat. Now this is the only time that we tend to use cocoa peat for succulents. Now the reason behind that is because uh, the pups that are gonna come up, they need a little bit of moisture unlike the uh, mother plant. So now we are gonna completely mix this up. In case if you feel that the soil is a little bit more, you can add a little bit more of the cocoa peat. So now let me completely mix this nicely and we'll take out all those fragments if there are any husk or those fragments we are going to take out those fragments and now we are going to take a container that has a drain hole all of those drain holes i've made it with the help of a iron rod and then we just fill it up with some soil and cocoa peat so i'm going to fill it a little bit more so now that we have completely filled it, uh, the same thing, just leave a little bit of edge on the top and then just uh, flatten it out. That's all about it. And you can see it is pat dry. This is how it's supposed to be if you are putting it into the soil. If you're worried that your soil is moist, then please do not add those leaf propagations on the soil because remember they have to yet callus. So we do not want them to come in contact with any moisture. Now the soil mix is completely bone dry. So now we are just going to place them on the upper layer so now as you can see this is the curve part so we want to keep the succulent like this a lot of people keep it um, like this or sometimes they happen to keep it upside down but i would suggest just keep it up facing up the cut facing upwards uh, because then the pup is going to come out much better you can place it however you want but i would say this is the best method uh, just lay it above the soil don't let those uh, cuts come in contact with the soil and you can just place them like this. I'm going to keep some space so that will be more visible as in when the roots grow. So as you can see, that's all about it. We have very carefully placed and you can see all of the scuts are above the soil. So that's how it's supposed to be. And now the next thing is we are just going to leave it as it is. Please do not cover the propagation with any plastic sheet. Do not use any lid. It has to be open. Uh, usually for our seedlings like when we use uh, flowering plants when we uh, you know put the seeds into the soil we tend to cover it with plastic but for a leaf propagation please do not cover it with plastic it has to be open if you are going to put a lid on it that is going to create a lot of humidity there's going to be a lot of moisture that's going to get trapped and your leaves will start to turn darker in color they will get rotted so it has to be open there has to be a good amount of air circulation at the same time there has to be a good amount of indirect bright light do not keep them in direct sunlight otherwise they will not work out 
so all you have to do is just leave them aside and that's all about it so now whenever the next process starts whenever the roots appear or whenever the pups appear i will definitely make a video on it and share it to you so now that's all about it i'm going to keep it over here uh, probably uh, a little bit back so that uh, in case if there is any water rain water or anything that tends to come in contact it won't come in contact so it's going to be kept right at the back uh, right at the back so that uh, it does not even accidentally there shouldn't be any water that's going to come up on this so i will get back to you as and when i see the new progress uh, again uh, there is no time frame i'm not very sure when they are going to sprout out the roots or when they're going to put out the pups whenever that happens i will definitely make a video on it so guys, I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing to it. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep propagating.